You are looking live here at the beautiful campus of Wake Forest University. Only three games remain on the regular season schedule. Tonight will serve as a true gut check for the Demon Deacons. I'm Ty Collins back at Spry Stadium for a crucial ACC matchup. Clemson pulls into Winston-Salem to take on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. It's just to give a look on how crucial this game is. Let's take a look at these ACC standings. Tigers holding on at that sixth spot or also known as the sixth seed for the ACC tournament. Only the top eight teams receive the invitation. The Deacons six spots below at number 12. We're really going to have to take care of business in these final two home games remaining in order to get a ticket to the conference tournament. Clemson undefeated on the road in ACC games 2-0. Hope to get ACC win number five tonight after coming off a heartbreaker versus number 10, Duke Blue Devils on senior night. Taylor Recepi blasted an absolute laser in the 77th minute, about 25 yards out to give the Devils a 3-2 win. Senior Miranda Westlake tallied her seventh goal of the season in the 66th minute. As, long, as well as Mariana Speckenmeyer, who also got her seventh goals. Those two players combined for 14 of the Tigers' 24 total goals on the season. So Coach Eddie Radwanski is going to really look to them to continue their trend, both with seven goals and one assist at 15 points apiece. But for Wake Forest, is going to have to turn to their senior leaders to Get back on track after losing four straight. They're going to have to look to Peyton Perea. It's her senior night, the captain, the true leader of this squad. And, of course, number nine, Bailey Feist. They need, just only needs three goals to move into the top ten of Wake Forest school history in goal scores. She's now got four goals and three assists on the season and is one of the top drawersoccer.com top 100 players. Cincinnati Nathan looks to get the Deeks back in the win column. She is ready. There she is in the pink little headband she's got on as we get ready for a big matchup. And for Wake Forest, you remember at 25 in the RPI and Clemson at 42, they're going to need a 500 record to at least get into the dance. The main dance for Clemson running the 4-3-3 lineup with seven upperclassmen. Remember, they lost to Texas in the second round of the NCAA tournament last year. Of course, there's Miranda Westlake right up top. Look for Colborn in the middle, as well as Speckmeyer in the left. No need for Shet's going to have to really about worry about number two and number 17. For Wake Forest, of course, they're going with the 4-3-3. Noni Frechette, again, the junior from Hermosa Beach. Right there, clocking in at number one in the ACC. Saves per game at 4.64. There's Bailey Feist, who's going to have to look for goal number five and try to get Wake Forest a big win against Clemson. Remember, they've lost two straight to these Tigers. They start six underclassmen, five sophomore, and one freshman. There's Eddie Rowanski former UNCG player and UNCG coach. His eighth season at Clemson, 79, 52, and 20. Was that ACC Coach of the Year in 2016. Also, the Southeast Region Coach of the Year in 2010. Has sent 20 players to all ACC academic team. And since 2013, there's Coach Tony Deleuze, his 22nd season. Got his 300th win the last time. I was here against Boston College. They have lost four straight. So Coach Tony Deleuze trying to get his crew back in shape at that College Cup appearance in 2011. They look to get back to the tournament as well. They lost to Penn State in the second round of the 2017 17 NCAA tournament. The weather 59 degrees and clear is definitely brisk. Here in the triad, a little blast of fall has finally arrived. In the Twin City, Clemson wearing the purple tops of the regalia tops and the orange shorts. 29th meeting between these two. Clemson, of course, with that lead of 15-9-4. Remember, Clemson won in 2017, 2-1. That was down in Clemson. 
in Wake's last win was that 3-0 win. So Wake Forest and the gold tops and the black shorts and, of course, the gold socks. There's no need for Shet right there at number 22. And McNamara gets the start up top. She had a couple looks at goal against Louisville when they lost 2-0 last Friday night. Here we go as Ryan Brown starts things off on the right side. There's Peyton Perea. Vicky Krug also on that far right in the back line. This team has let 12 goals go in since that win against Boston College. So the defense has definitely had a little gut check for sure tonight. Bailey Feist looking for someone's be your support. No one there for her. And a throw in for the Clemson Tigers. Again, it's Peyton Perea's senior night. Number Bailey Feist's senior night. She got a huge goal and a big upset over then ranked number five Penn State. Artist daughter, and here's a maybe a shot by the freshman DeMarco. Hit it on the outside of her right foot. And if Bedford gets a start tonight, sophomore had a big impact last year as a freshman. He's got only one goal in the season so far this year. She is dangerous when she gets into space and has a chance to look at the cage. Out of bounds, it'll be a throw in for Wake Forest. Madison Hammond, the other captain. Bailey Feist trying to split the defense. I'm sort of give those two road wins, their only wins. They got the ACC 2 0 on the road. Big win against Florida State. Clock in at 9 and 6. 4 and 2 on the road overall. And they're going to try that left channel. service whistle blown our referees tonight Sergio Gonzalez assistant referee Hudson Owens and Abbas Peran there is Sergio both teams pretty disciplined as far as uh, fouls wise only five yellow cards for Clemson, just nine for Wake Forest on the year. Gonna be out of bounds and a corner kick awarded to the Tigers. Corner kick of the night belongs to the Clemson Tigers. As they set up. Beautiful serve ball and at a open spot right there on the far stick. It's now Wake Forest trying to clear it out. McNamara trying to connect with Arnest Daughter. And possession up right back to Wake Forest as Bailey Feist will push it ahead to McNamara. Bailey Feist had a great idea trying to find Peyton Perea, but cut out by Clemson. Captain Madison Hammond right there to collect it. Feist got on top of that one. I believe she was trying to find Ryan Brown on the right side. DeMarco. Lost it. Here come the Tigers. Kimber Haley went down. 
Ryan Brown plays into the middle to McNamara, and McNamara tried to do a one-touch to Bailey Feist. But again, cut out by the Tigers. Tigers return nine starters from last year. It's preseason pick sixth, which that's exactly where they are right now. Head towards the end of the 2018 season. They sit at sixth and Wake Forest at 12th. Wake Forest with an absolute brutal schedule. There's Sandy McIver. Seven and four when she's in between the pipes. It's just about 76% save percentage. The junior from Winford, England actually missed first four games. She was playing for the national team in England. Went to the U-20 World Cup. Has 11 appearances on the year. This will be her 12th. Benna. Ball goes back and forth in the midfield. Marco, the freshman, lays it off to Madison Hammond. Hammond to Arna's daughter, and Arna's daughter puts into space looking for Feist. Feist gets pushed down in the box, and no call. And Feist is upset, and I think has every right to be. Let's take a look. Yep. I don't know about that. That was looked like a shoulder before the ball, but uh, unfortunately for Wake Forest, no call. And we're still tied here at 0-0. Now Clemson quickly on the counter. Looking for the service and just behind. I believe Ellen Colbert. McNamara. One good chance by Wake Forest, a no call with a shove on Bailey Feist. <laughs> Trying to find a Making a run in the seam. Tigers, and here comes Feist putting it into space for McNamara to run on. A little too far out in front, and the Tigers just trying to play it out. Also part of that is McIver again. She's also part of that England U19 team. McNamara behind, is she gonna be able to take a shot? That should be a corner, and it is. I think it was last touched by Ellen Colburn. Let's take a look at this again. Good placement. Just trying to do a one-two and turn around shot by McNamara. I believe Colburn got a cleat on it. It'll be the first corner to Wake Forest. And the starter will trot over there to the far right flag. Sophomore from Iceland. Gets the start tonight, puts it low and driven. Ryan Brown had a chance. Still inside the area. Bailey Feist tried to find Ravenna as her support back there. It'll be a Wake Forest throw in and they're attacking third. Play just about 10 minutes here in this first half. Tied up at 0-0. Perea going to try from way outside. We all know she's got a foot on her. Didn't quite get the connection she wanted. There's Peyton Perea, the, the captain. Pretty much a leader her entire career here at Wake Forest. She just finally got the armband this year. Feist, there's a shove in the back, and she'll finally get it. It's 
Clemson not happy with it. I believe that was Sidney Dawson. Our starter lining up. See Vicky Krug asking finally for 10, I believe. As referee Sergio Gonzalez will now award the 10 yards. Two dangerous free kick takers for Wake Forest there with Arnest Stotter from Iceland and Vicky Krug from Germany. Let's see what Wake Forest has in store. Arnest Stotter going to try to chip it inside the area. Vice trying to split the defense. I don't know how she did it, but she did. Tripped up, no call. Bedford, play crew. Wake Forest continues owning the possession game so far here in the first half. McNamara able to turn. Here comes Feist. Feist now looking up, finding. Oh, she had a right idea as DeMarco was making a nice run here tucked into the middle. And pointing to the direction where she wants Ravenna. Clemson now with possession. They're going to go for the long ball and try to use the right channel. Speckmeyer. Leading goal scorer for Clemson. Along with Westlake. Clemson has only allowed 13 goals on the season. They allowed two against Duke, but I got to tell you, well, excuse me, they allowed three against Duke, but I'll tell you that third goal was absolutely impossible to stop. We've never seen a ball like that move. Sheffy with a Absolute laser beam. There's a foul, and that was Arnold Stoddard coming late on the tackle. Dana Antio. Sam Staub, the senior. What a player she is. She puts one up in the air, and Noni Frechette took her eyes off it and was able to corral it. from San Diego, California, has 30 career assists. There's no need for Shet. Six, seven, and one as the keeper. Remember, she was United Coaches Player of the Week. First Deacon to do since Katie Siegel back, excuse, Katie Stingle back in 2011. She had 12 saves against the Nittany Lions. Here's a chance for Wake Forest. Off the boot and another corner kick awarded to the old Golden Black. Wake Forest will get Syracuse on Sunday at 1 p.m. before they head to finish out the 2018 season at Chapel Hill against the number one team in the ACC, the Tar Heels. Artist daughter places one, trying to find Vice. Vice with a little diving header there, trying to direct it to the left. And as we advertised in the beginning of the show, they're going to need number nine to really come alive, and she has definitely proven that she's alive and well here tonight. Pressure from Ravenna. 
Meyer will lay off the pressure, but here comes Clemson again. They cut out that pass. One touch play to Perea. Perea just trying to poke it through, hoping that Arnold's daughter run through with a through ball. Only four shots, for, just four shots for Wake Forest, but zero for Clemson. Two fouls between the two clubs. Two corners, one for Wake, two corners for Wake and one for Clemson as Noni Frechette came way off her line. And I believe on Speckmire that hit the ground, I think she got hit on her left hip. Yeah, it looks like Noni Frechette right knee hit the hip of Speckmeyer. But Frechette came all the way off her line. Which is good awareness because she was able to stop the attack by the Tigers. Speckmeyer on the left hip looks to be okay. Beckmeyer, she's going to be a star for sure. She's not one already. 2017, she was all ACC. Had a hat trick on her first appearance against SIUE. 15th player in Clemson history, the eighth fresh freshman in Clemson history to do so. Because of that hat trick, her first appearance as a freshman last year, she got Coach Eddie Rodwanski his 200th career win. See, there's Eddie Rodwanski chatting with the referee. I think happy that her, his star offensive player, Speckmeyer, has to come out. Wronski actually was a member of the U.S. men's national team back in 1985, had five caps on the team. Pretty impressive player, former Spartan, former coach of the Spartans. Also ahead of the Greensboro Twisters Youth Soccer Association getting into coaching. Under 30 minutes to go in the first half. 0-0 locked in here at Spry. Frechette again way past the 18. Does Arnold's daughter keep it in play? No, not a chance. It'll be a throw in for Clemson. Ravenna. Did not have a lot of time, had to clear it. Here comes Bailey Feist. Cuts into the middle. And trying to play the right channel as Ryan Brown was making a run. Our starter checked in. Ray will play Feist. See how uh, crazy Wake Forest's schedule is this year. Wake Forest trying to get that ball back. It'll be out of bounds for a goal kick. Is picked to finish eighth. They play 12 ranked teams in their schedule. 
McNamara put one on frame, hit the back heel of Ryan Brown. Hammond moves out here close to the touch line. Daughter pressuring. Daughter started now moves into the middle. Try to play McNamara. McNamara wrestles away with it. Trying to connect with the freshman DeMarco. Deacon's back line moves up. Since that Boston College win, the Wake Forest had to travel to number six Virginia. Just talking about how brutal their schedule is. Had to travel to number six, Virginia. Travel to number 17, well, actually number 10 now, Duke Blue Devils. Then to number 10, Florida State. And then they lost to Louisville here at home Friday, which, by the way, is 11-3 in and receiving votes. Yeah, Clemson here and then Syracuse on Sunday. Six, seven, and one. These last three games are going to be very, very important. No one awarded to Clemson. Tigers. Here it comes. Very dangerous weapon. Clear it out by the Deacons. Still looking for their first shot of the night. Played over 20 minutes so far. This is the right side of the field of Ryan Brown. Nice move there, but not going to fool Madison Hammond. Clemson upset number 10, Florida State. Their first time down there since 2001. And Clemson knocked off the Simmons. in their last five, and all those wins have been on the road. So Clemson definitely road tested and road approved. The core is trying to snap this four game losing streak. Artist daughter almost got the possession back. Now the Deacons with it. As they move up three on two, Peyton Perea. Oh, looks like it just hit the crossbar. But a 
great idea. Let's take a look as Arna Stoddard lays it off with her left foot. And Perea, yep, just hit that corner. Gonna lay it off and Perea kind of falling back. It's a tough shot to make. But Perea hit the woodwork. It'll be the fifth shot for Wake Forest on the night. the Tigers and Speckmeyer back on the pitch for Rebonski. Now the whistle blown. Referee Sergio Gonzalez wanted to check and see if it was more of an advantage, but he brought it back. That'll be a free kick awarded to the Wake Forest team and Deacons. Let's take a look, just going hard at it. Sarah Osborne, Jr., sophomore Arna's daughter. Ravenna will try to get into the 18 and can't quite get it into the area. As Arna's daughter now play it to Hammond moving up. Oh, she had the great idea. Found a pathway, had three options there. But great awareness by Sandy MacGyver. And she was able to come up and swallow it up. But that passing lane opened up. Madison Hammond put it right through. Starter trying to turn. Possession back to the Tigers. Here come the Tigers. Down the right lane, looking for the service. Vicky Krug was able to put a boot on it. And Wake Forest is going to clear it. And we'll throw in for the Tigers. Still, Clemson without a shot. As we hit 20 minutes left to go in the first. Brown, the sophomore from Indianapolis. One goal on the season and a beautiful header against Michigan. A service by Estelle Laurier. Up and it'll be a free kick for Wake Forest. Shove right in the back, and that was Ellen Colborn again. In the mix of things. His artist daughter's right behind it. Try to play this in to the 18. Here we go. Good kick. McNamara with a nice little header. Trying to sneak to that right post. The Giver was there to stop that too. Just not enough pace behind that. Enough time to react. Sixth shot of the evening for Wake Forest. McNamara going to have to put it into fifth. Never comes off her line. I believe it's an offside call on McNamara. The second offside call on the evening. Eddie Radwanski looking for win number 80 if he gets the win tonight.
good news for Coach Tony to lose, too, is Wake Forest is not like a really a one-dimensional attack. They have ten different players that have scored, so a lot of players that can put in the back of the net. Fifteen Deeks have at least a point on the 2018 year. Zahn Stoddard settles it. Great skill by the sophomore. Feist finds the pathway to Hammond. Hammond, McNamara. That was a beautiful connection. Had a perfect ball played inside the 18, and McNamara was able to put a head on it. And that one had some pace. Seven shots now for Wake Forest. Let's take a look at that again as Madison Hammond uses the left foot and had the right idea as McNamara was trying to find the top drawer on the right. Another chance. Scoops up and it goes out of bounds. One more time. Well-directed ball. And great save by McIver. Gonna knock that away. Yeah, now 30 saves on the year. Six shutouts for the junior from Winsford, England. Now Perea just played into space and hope that the other captain, Madison Hammond, can run on. Still owning the possession game so far. Pass efficiency has been dead on as well. Right inside the 18. Perea going to try. She lined it up, put it on a platter, but lifted a little too high. It goes over the crossbar. The senior got a dangerous foot. He scored many times from back there. It's a long distance threat that Clemson is fully aware of. Eight shots for Wake Forest, zero for Clemson. Rochette has yet to get into the mix of things. She came off her line. There she is off her line again. And again, possession for Wake Forest as they move it into the attacking third. Cut out by Clemson. Great defense by Sarah Osborne. She keeps it. She'll play in the middle to Speckmeyer. Oh, nice through ball and offside. Just timed it a little too late. It was Miranda Westlake, another leading scorer for Clemson. Flag was up. First offside call on Clemson. Vice flicking on. Brian Browns overlapping run with Bedford to her right. She keeps it in, goes to the left. Puts it on her left and just scuffs it a little and goes out of bounds. A little step over by Ryan Brown. Bedford was making the overlapping run to the right. But had a good look and it's now the ninth shot for Wake Forest. and 76 shots for Wake Forest this season. They allowed 162. Their average coming into tonight's game was about a 12 shots per game. They're well ahead of schedule and get another chance here as Honor Stoddard got tangled up. Clemson moving it to the left side. It was Kimber Haley. 
able to get it out of harm's way. And Ravenna looks up and will play the long ball to try and find Arner's daughter. That'll go out of bounds for a throw in for Wake Forest. Fast pitch, because Sarah Osborne couldn't quite keep that in play. Under 12 minutes to go in the first. Tied up 0-0, but Wake Forest has dominated as far as possession. Has put up eight, excuse me, 10 shots now. And in Clemson with zero. Wake Forest really needing a win. And some help to try to get to the ACC tournament. Which will be a very, very hard tournament. Probably harder than the actual NCAA tournament. You can imagine that. Wake Forest with an RPI of 25, so if they can keep 500 record or a little bit better, they can get into the dance. A nice service ball, Ernest Daughter, goal! Thought she had it with the first touch. She had to come back and reload, and she put it in the back of the net, and Wake Forest now leads 1-0 on their 11th shot of the night. Ryan Brown with a beautiful assist. Let's watch this again. Watch Brian. Brian Brown just put it right in, and Arna's daughter making a nice run. She probably could have dribbled it in. And Wake Forest happy that they get one on the board. Her second goal of the year on the 35th minute. Wake Forest now leads 1-0. It's Ryan Brown's third assist of the year. The sophomore from Indianapolis. Deeks are 5 0 in one when leading at half. So we'll keep an eye on that. And we're about 10 and a half to go in the first. Here come Clemson trying to answer. McNamara got bumped. Well defended by the Tigers. Ventillo. Trying to throw it in, but it'll be a throw in for Wake Forest. Trying to find August Daughter and cut out. Possession back to the Tigers. Courtney Jones looking for an option, so play the right side. And the Deacons have done a great job stopping any kind of attack that Clemson has. And obviously, keeping Clemson without a shot here so far in the first half is pretty impressive. A free kick awarded, knocked down Arnest Daughter. I believe the foul will be on Sam Staub. Both going Hard on it, Arnold's daughter just backed into it. Free kick awarded to Wake Forest. In a very good spot if you're the old Golden Black to try to tack on to their lead. Vicky Krug is dangerous from this area, but it looks like Arnold's daughter is going to take it. Both with vicious, vicious strikes. Tease it up. This is off to the right. Hammond all the way in the far right. Wake Forest as now she'll move back to her normal position. McNamara 
Meyer trying to play Ryan Brown. But no luck there, but possession still with Wake Forest. They've kept it down here a good majority of the first half. Feist slotting it through to the freshman DeMarco. DeMarco with a great move, gets past two. A shot in off to the left. She was in perfect position to use her left foot and try that left post. Watch it again. Like as if it was in slow mo. Try to use the left foot, curl it in. Coming in for Clemson, number 27. Marco, one of these top drawer soccer, top freshmen, has really, really been impressive for Coach Tony to lose. First substitution of the match is Brooke Power. Eddie Rodwanski. Bedford gets past one defender. Wanted to try again, but she'll play the smart ball. Perea now playing the right channel. There's Ryan Brown. Can she get another assist? Because she had Arna's daughter making a nice run. And she ran out of real estate, and it'll be a goal kick for the Clemson Tigers. 12 shots for Wake Forest, zero for Clemson. Three offsides calls on Wake Forest. Of the 12 shots, three have been on frame. One obviously in the back of the net for Artist Daughter. Just look at the skill by the German international player. She is impressive. Got knocked off the ball. See how that ball just died at her foot. Very impressive. Shoved off then by Speckmeyer. Trying to move it up the field, still can't. Now Wake Forest. Arna's daughter lost it. Courtney Jones into the middle. They're going to try to switch fields. Let's stay in bounds. Had a good opportunity of staying in bounds and a good idea for the Tigers trying the left flank. Here's Hannah Bedford, the sophomore from Charleston. Five fouls on Clemson, only one on Wake Forest. Clemson now into the attacking third. Trying to level this thing up. This should be a corner. And it will be. Third corner for the Tigers. As they set up for the under Tigers, four and a half to go. Smith. In the first, Wake Forest on top, 1-0 with a goal by Arna's daughter in the 35th minute. Kenzie Smith also checked in for the Tigers. And here comes the corner. Clear it away, I believe Feist got ahead on it. Feist trying to push it up forward as Clemson's back line moves all the way up. Way past the midway line. And still held shotless here in the first half. Mm. Mm. McNamara looked 
to go to Ryan Brown, but she'll play it into the middle to Captain Peyton Perea. This is dangerous. Arna's daughter going to challenge. And this will roll out of bounds for a throw in. Blake Four is trying to tack on another goal. Hammond trying to find Arna Stoddard will play McNamara. And another offside call. Not sure they called it on this time. Maybe it was Madison Hammond. Just got behind that back line. Side call on Lake Forest, two on Clemson. They are the ARs have been pretty tight with their calls. On off sideline. Prochette is trying to clear it. Free kick awarded to Wake Forest. As it looks like Ellen Colbert again. Called for the foul. Wake Forest still stuck at 12 shots, but again, the impressive number is zero, and that's what they've held Clemson to in the shots category. Bailey Feist got tangled up and lost it. And Clemson cannot string together passes to get up the field. One minute. One minute remains, and Wake Forest with a 1-0 lead. McNamara calling for it. Flag stays down, and McNamara just had a small window, maybe, to try to poke it over McIver. And I believe she's upset because I think maybe McNamara got her on the knee. Wake Forest defense has really showed up tonight. Especially Ten, here in the first five, half. Eight, eight, it seven, looks six, five, it will be for four, sure that three, Clemson will two, go into the locker room. One, zero. Without a shot, or does that count? At the end of the first half, our score, Wake, Wake Forest, Forest 1, Clemson with 0. With a goal by Arnest Daughter in the 35th minute, puts Wake Forest ahead 1-0. And remember, Wake Forest is 5-0-1 when leading at half. We'll see if that stays that way, or 6-0-1 when we come back. <laughs> 